Hi everyone and welcome to a video that is hopefully going to be a little bit different and a little bit fun. I know a lot of you are stuck at home at the minute either by yourself or with family or housemates. So I thought I would review a, I guess you can call it a board game, which I have been really enjoying recently. It is quickly becoming one of my favourite games. And I thought maybe it would be something that you guys would like to try out for yourself and maybe see if you like. If you guys don't know, I'm a huge fan of board games and while this isn't technically a board game, it's definitely a game you play essentially on a tabletop, I guess, um, and it's really fun. This game is, for those of you who have not heard of it before, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, and this is the kit with the Thames Murders and other cases. Basically, it is a storytelling game. It's a game which you read a story, discover a story, go on little adventures working for Sherlock Holmes, and uncover mysteries for yourself. Also, as someone who has just moved from London, this being set in London is making me miss home so much. <sighs> so, the game itself is absolutely beautifully designed. It comes in this gorgeous box with the most beautiful artwork. It is all so well made, so beautiful, so well thought out, and it's just, it's amazing. Basically, the game itself comes with a gorgeous little rule book which introduces you to who you are and Sherlock Holmes. Basically you are playing as part of the Baker Street Irregulars which are like his little group of street urchins. Uh, you're one of them and you run around and you find clues and you figure things out. It's a wonderful little booklet. Even the design of this is gorgeous. And then it has a little uh, introduction, like a little story lecture given by Sherlock Holmes who tells you about all the different kind of tools and people you have at your disposal, disposal, and you have a lot of informants you can go and visit for each case. We'll get to that in a second. So the box itself comes with an absolutely gorgeous map of London. It's stylized for the game, so it's split up into areas and you have different things marked on it. So you have the Thames, you have all different buildings which each have a number and kind of like coordinates so you can find them and you'll need to go to different places um, and visit them and you can kind of see how far things are away from each other. You have a little scale, so in some cases you might want to figure out, okay, could someone get from here to here in this amount of time? Um, and it gives you like walking speeds for people and stuff. It's just, it, it's wonderful and beautiful and you have lots of kind of um, important things marked on here. So you have things like the British Museum, Regent's Park, Hyde Park, and others are just kind of like numbers and streets, and there'll be things like people's houses and so on. Sorry about the air freshener. So during the game, you will want to keep this out on the table and kind of always have it there. To go along with this, you have the London Directory, which includes uh, an alphabetical list of all the people you might encounter or come across or hear about, and where you can find them with the coordinates. And then you also get at the back a directory of businesses split up into not, not just businesses, but pretty much anything you could need. So you have things like government offices, florists, hotels, um, booksellers, booksellers rare and used, you know, uh, tobacconists, Somerset House, sport associations, stables, basically everything you could possibly need for every case. So that goes alongside the map and is incredibly useful. You will want that. You also get 10 newspapers corresponding to each of the 10 cases that come in this game. And each newspaper corresponds to the case. So for the first case, you will use the first newspaper. For the second case, you use the first two newspapers. For the third case, you use the first three newspapers, all in chronological order. And not everything in every newspaper will be related to the cases. Uh, some of them just seem funny stories and throwaway things, um, but some of them are very useful and can give you suspect lists and all sorts of little clues like that. And um, it's really hard to not give away too many spoilers in this, but these are just, again, beautifully designed, beautifully written. They really engross you in the story. They really make the world seem so real. It's wonderful. And then alongside the newspapers in the box, you have the cases. And the cases come in the form of these 10 absolutely beautiful booklets. So again, the cases are all dated and you want to try and play them in chronological order, each getting more difficult as it goes along. So the first one is uh, the Munitions Magnate, case one, 12th of March, 1888. And we'll use this one as an example, but like I say, there are different ones throughout the box. There are 10 different ones in this story. And while they're not exactly replayable for you because you already know what's happened and you know what you're looking for, 
um, it's definitely going to be fun once you've done one of these cases or you've done all of the cases and um, to hand them over to friends or family and see what they do in the situations and you can talk about it afterwards and stuff and see what they figured out and uh, what they found that you didn't and so on. And honestly though, even though there's 10 cases, there is hours and hours and hours of gameplay in here. The first one alone uh, took me and my friend who did it. Um, I think we spent about four or five hours on this, just kind of like reading through it and discussing and kind of getting really engrossed and really enjoying it. So if that's just one case and they get harder as they go on, you can imagine how much time and kind of gameplay there is in this one set. I think there's also extensions you can get with other cases and an extension to the map and stuff like that, so a lot of potential here. Let's talk about the first one for now and I'll try not to give any spoilers with this. Uh, but the case opens with you getting a little kind of like introduction from the person who's come to see Sherlock Holmes and it's all kind of like written as a story all in the kind of typical Sherlock Holmes style and it's wonderful. It's like it's beautifully written, it's engrossing, you have these gorgeous little like images and illustrations that come along with it sometimes giving you clues for things like notebooks or receipts or things like that, it's great. And in the first case, not to give anything away, uh, but a man comes to you saying that his brother who owns a munitions company has been murdered. The police think it's a robbery but he's not so sure. He thinks, you know, there was there was something else. And you go through and you visit locations and um, there's different story bits relating to each of the kind of like locations on the map, not each of them, but each of the relevant ones. And you can go through and you can say, okay, so because of this, I'm gonna go do an or uh, go to the autopsy first. And you use your list of informants to go to the autopsy. And then you might get some clues. You might think, oh, well, this was found at the crime scene. So I'll go to this shop to see who bought those items and so on. And you visit the map and the story unfolds and you learn so much and it's wonderful. And then at the end of the case, when you think you might have solved it, when you think you've figured it out, you get a list of questions at the end, which are printed upside down. And there's a first series of questions, which are like the main story points. And then a second series, um, which aren't necessarily related to the main crime, but they're things you might have discovered along the way. Then you turn to the solution and Sherlock Holmes reveals everything that he has discovered and puts you to shame. <laughs> And after that, you compare your answers to Sherlock's answers with the scoring, which is in an envelope at the back. And uh, you compare like how many leads he followed to how many leads you followed and you get a score and how much you get right and stuff like that. Basically, Sherlock always scores 100 points and you have the potential to get, I think it's 140 in total from all the correct answers. And then you take away five points for every lead you visited more than Sherlock, if that makes sense. So for this first one, for example, he does it so quickly <laughs> and you will always lose. You will always get less points than Sherlock. I think in this first game, me and my friend scored a total of minus 65 points while Sherlock got 100. So we didn't beat him, but we did get all but one of the right answers and it was just because we missed something really small and um, so the other thing was that we just, we overcomplicated it and we went too far with our theory and we thought, ooh, ooh this person must be working with this person, this and this and this and this and this. And we, we overcomplicated it and we should have stayed simple. I was proud of a certain little thing that we found, um, or rather that I noticed where I was like, ooh, that's a clue and that tells us that and it must be that because, um, and that I thought was like a little real kind of like Sherlock thing that I picked up on that I was really proud of figuring out. But what I will say is that even if you don't beat Sherlock, it doesn't matter. That's not really the point of the game. The game is just about figuring it out and getting engrossed in the story. And honestly, I kind of recommend that you don't try and beat Sherlock because the only way to do that is to visit the same or fewer leads than him. And he does it in like four leads or like 10 leads or something like really, really small like that. And the fun in this game is in visiting all the leads and talking to the people and getting really engrossed in the story. So that's what I recommend you do. Um, don't just try and get it done quickly like Sherlock does, but just take your time and enjoy it and just have a good time with it. I like to have a little notepad and paper, like a little notepad and pen with me as we go along and I take notes and write clues and I have a suspect list and I keep a list of all the leads we've visited and stuff. Um, the informants are always really fun. You can go visit Mycroft Homes. There's someone you can go and speak to about some Moriarty stuff, which is always really fun to do. Um, there's the autopsy guy, there's 
uh, people who work for newspapers who can tell you about like international politics or the local like socialite scene and all the gossip and stuff like that and you'd be surprised what bits come in useful and what don't so in this one I don't want to give you too many spoilers, but there's lots of potential leads to follow. It's like, is someone trying to take over his business? Is someone trying to sell secrets to a foreign country? Is it someone who's jealous because he's having an affair with their wife? Is it his wife who's jealous because he's having an affair? It's, there's so many different roads and leads and potential options you can go down, and it's really, really fun to discover them all. And um, even the ones don't end up being directly related to the murder. It's like, ooh, I want to know all this gossip that's going on in his life and find out all this stuff. And it, oh, it's so much fun. It's really, really good. It's like you're living in a Sherlock Holmes story and discovering this stuff for yourself. And I could not recommend it more. 10 cases in here are gonna last you so long. And it's the kind of game that you can sit down and play by yourself. Or as I like to do, get a group of friends around and you kind of like take it in turns to read things out and get really engrossed in the story and you discuss things and you go back and read things and you're like, oh no, wait, there was this story in the newspaper that said this, so maybe we should go here and talk to this person and do this. And it's, it's so much fun. My one and only criticism really is that sometimes you don't know where to go to find someone and it kind of feels unfair that you're following a lead that you didn't have to so so in some cases it would be like okay we well went to the german embassy to go and speak to someone because we thought that's where it where he'd be and he wasn't he was at home so then we had to follow a second lead to go to his home to look him up by name instead of going to the embassy where he worked and when we were like, okay, well now we need to go speak to the person who works for the German embassy, so we'll do the same. So we went to his home and he wasn't there, he was at the German embassy at work. So it's like we only needed to follow two leads and we followed four because there was no consistency in where people were like that. That was a little frustrating in terms of it lowering our score when we felt it didn't need to. Um, but honestly, it wasn't a bad thing. It wasn't like it took up any time or effort. Um, it wasn't like it ruin the game, it just made our score a bit lower than it had to. You know, if that's my only complaint, you know, <laughs> it must be pretty decent. Yeah, it's just, it's easy to play and easy to get into, you don't need a lot of prep. If you don't like reading stuff out for yourself, there is an app you can get which kind of reads it out for you, but I found the guy narrating a little monotonous and I don't really pick things up from listening to other people read, so I prefer to read it myself and make notes as I go along at my own pace like that and it means it's a bit easier to kind of reread bits and stuff. Um, but the app is there if you do want to try it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where I want to end this video. I just thought it would be a fun, silly little thing to do as a one-off um, to recommend you Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. It's wonderful, seriously. I'm having so much fun with this. And if you guys don't know, I'm a big, big fan of board games. Um, last time one of my friends was over, me and him played um, Eldritch Horror for like, Oh god, we played two games back to back and it probably took us on eight, nine hours. It was so much fun. I'm just, I'm a huge board game fan. I like the strategy elements, I like um, story elements in games, I, I like everything. <laughs> so if you have any other recommendations for me, please leave them down in the comments below. If you played this game, let me know what you think, but no spoilers for any of the cases down in the comments because I want you guys to go out there and discover it for yourself and just have so much fun with this because it's a game you will get lost in for hours. And as soon as we'd finished and solved the first case, I was like, okay, I wanna do the second one. But at the same time, I was like, no, wait, I wanna savor it and make it last. So wonderful, fantastic game, thoroughly recommend it. And it's perfect to play during isolation if you're stuck on your own or with a group of family or friends. It's the kind of thing you can play with anyone really. And I love it. So thank you for watching today. Thank you for letting me do this little self-indulgent video. Hopefully it's just a short one, but I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all again very, very soon.